Okay. Hi, this is Sarah from sarayip.com. Facebook, the numbers queen, and Instagram, sarayip1111, with a very fantastic, cool person. So this is Suzanne Altid, uh, previously Suzanne King. Um, welcome. It's amazing to see you again. So good to be with you again. So we'll be talking about some of your meditation and life tips, as well as your numerology. So Suzanne, how would you introduce yourself, like in terms of kind of what you what you do? Oh, good question. So uh, previously I was a peak performance coach and now it's all about, it's still, there is still an element of coaching, but I think it's really about empowering people to be the best versions of themselves. Yeah. And what that really means is being the truest version of yourself. So not trying to reach and become something or thinking from a place of you're not enough, but to be able to say, this is who I am. I'm unapologetic about that. And I really love who I am. So Yeah, just enlarging your true self. And it's interesting because there is that element in coaching of reaching to be like a template or like a special sort of high-performing coach. It's so tempting. It's just like when you're an athlete and you just feel like if I could just run a bit more like them or hit a bit more like them and my life would be better. I know. I think it, one of the best ones um, was that American gymnast. I think her name was, um, I've forgotten her name, but she's, everyone's like, oh, you're like the female version of Michael Phelps because of how many gold medals oh. you've won and this and this. And she's like, oh, actually, no, I'm me. <laughs> and I was like, yes, that's exactly what you need to be. Be you because you are the best version of you. And if you can bring you the full you and the full expression of you to everything you do, then that's when life becomes really magical. Yeah. And also you just give other people permission to like relax <laughs> and breathe. Okay. So we met through Basic Bananas and I still remember meeting you because yeah, it was just this like fireworks, wasn't it? We just, we, I think we, we think similarly, which is that we love <laughs> to have a good time and also change the world. So if we get into the question, so based on your date of birth, which you've given me privately, we know that you are a 24 slash six life path, mm -hmm. like um, I guess famous people like John Lennon, um, Steve Irwin. Uh, oops, sorry, my, my baby's outside the door. So if you hear oh. crashing and banging, it's because there's like a tiny King Kong character trying to enter the room. Uh, so yeah, look, we know 2022 is a six universal year for the planet. So it's all about opening our minds and eyes, healing our mental health. And this is actually a huge shift point for all the sixes. So have you been feeling that? Absolutely. So it's, it's really interesting in the last 12 months, I have gone through a massive transformation mm -hmm. and yeah. even, even this week. Yeah, um, yeah. Really, of course, well, leading up to the call, obviously. <laughs> oh my God, absolutely. And I think. I love that you said it's about like mental health and mental healing yeah. and opening and expansion because that is exactly the thing that I'm focusing on mm. at the moment and bringing a lot more love and presence to that. Oh, I'm just, I feel like I have been preparing for this call. So obviously it's Mercury goes direct in the next 24 hours after three weeks of just really digging through, you know, the truth of our lives. Um, also, we have a new moon, which is that new beginnings. But look, it's been pretty crunchy. I have to admit, I haven't slept for about seven days. Um, my son is vigorous, is the best way to put it. Um, as you, you also have a child, right? So you get it. Three-year-old. I have one of those. Love to model models at 3.45 a.m. every morning. Yeah. Always 3.45. I could set a watch. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a good, it's a good time to wake up, they tell us, um, for, if you're a Tibetan monk. Yeah, right. um, so anyway here we are I you know what I mean like I work in the spiritual industry and sometimes I do laugh because you're like oh you know I'm just really tired and my child wakes me up and they're like oh but you could just meditate you know that's that's like the ideal time and I, I'm like okay just just come to my house while I lie in a hammock and do that <laughs> just joking I'm just joking uh I love everyone so Look, it will be a huge year for you and, you know, we'll probably talk, I'm sure, off the call more about that. But it also means that you are, you are required, like sixes are required this year and we're going to see that get really strong probably around September. And look, this is not about political affiliations, but it's super interesting that ScoMo 33.6, Anthony Albanese 24.6 did a whole prediction thing on them. So, you know, all these sixes is like duking it out. It's just yep. fascinating. Um, now I'm just interested. So we know in numerology that the life path also brings these critical ages for change. So around six or 24, was there anything that sort of jumped out at you as sort of, yeah, changing your life, setting you so in a 20, different path? 
24, absolutely. I think that's where my whole life, impl- what I, I call wow. it, imploded. Mm. But it's where I moved away from all of my friends and family because oh. work sent me away um, oh. and broke up with boyfriend who mm. I was, we were on the path to getting married. Oh, that gosh. was a big shock. And I was really put into this, like, remote area in wow. Tasmania. Oh, and wow. I had no access, even mobile reception, I had no access. It was like complete cut off. But during that time was actually when I really got into meditation. I really got into the importance of being in nature. I read countless books. Like I was just, a, you know, a personal development junkie. Like just read, 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 ferocious in reading. Um, it's also when I got connected with a Tony Robbins coach who then actually um, brought me into Tony Robbins. I ended up being a peak performance coach for him. So that really started that. But it was a lot about being in the wilderness. And I, it's like I was in the wilderness in all methods, like spiritually, emotionally, physically, mm. and really identifying who I am. And then at the same time, I met this incredible man who became a bit of a mentor. And yeah. I remember saying to him, why are you so happy? And here I was being a little snotty nosed 24 year old thinking, thinking that I, my life was so bad because oh. of this breakup and yeah. I had lost a daughter to leukemia. Oh. And he said to me, when I lost my daughter, I realized how precious life was and that you got to live every moment to the full. And that moment with him really transformed a lot of the way I've lived because I was like, oh my gosh, if a man can lose a daughter, his daughter, his, you know, beautiful girl who he loves so much and realise, not become bitter about it, but to Mm. actually realise how precious life is and how beautiful life is. I was like, I have no excuse. Um, Mm. And so, yeah, 24 was such a pivotal time for me. Gosh, yeah, look, I'm just so grateful for your honesty. And, you know, this is not just about proving numerology works. It's about giving people a real sense of home when you, because you can use numerology to do your 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 autobiography, it's just like really gentle, quick and clean. And, and I just do this with like parents and their kids all the time, just so that they can get out of the way, like when their kids are about to, you know, have a growth spurt. But if we just go back a tiny little bit, so we know Tasmania is a six energy, so interesting. And I bet, I bet if we plotted back through your travel itinerary, there's lots of times you've done this. Um, we know that, yeah, your six energy is about thinking for yourself, which is very hard to do because from what I've seen of you, you're very sensitive. And so, of course, you're always like reading people around you. So in a way, you know, it's like they took away your your library. So you had to build your own internal resources. 100%. I've never thought of it that way, but that is 100% right. They closed the public library. So you had to learn to rewrite your own programming and it's it's so interesting because yeah often what happens around the turning point it's not always fun I know for me um you know my dad had gotten cancer I was leaving the charity field and for some god knows reason I decided to become a palm reader (laughs) against my like religion my culture my upbringing but there was just this like rabid desire to be a gypsy (laughs) and there I am thinking well that's just the end of my life um, but no, you know, it was the beginning of everything and it sounds in a way like it was the same for you. So the meditation topic is such an important one. I was looking at the numerology of it. So meditation has the same vibration as mental health, mental illness and thinking. And I just feel like it is literally this uh, protection. It's that protection from sort of tipping over the edge. And it's just so tempting to jump off that edge because it sounds strange, but you can get a certain level of attention for being dysfunctional in this society, right? Even on social media. But it's more than that. I think, and more so, I'm seeing that obviously with my partner, he's got children from a previous marriage and even just talking with his daughter. The thing that keeps showing up for me is how much everything is labelled and and identified with. Yeah. And also too, even with my niece and um, even people that, I've worked with that are a bit younger it is very much there's a bonding through mental health there's a Mm -hmm. there's an identification through it and there's a safety by having it because Mm -hmm. you know if you're clean clear and happy then you're not the norm anymore 
Well, and people basically say that you're in denial and that's, exactly that's right. really in its own way kind of crippling and can draw you into this sort of turmoil place. Um, I had this idea actually as you were talking, I've, I've got a number of labels, so, you know, anorexic, autistic, all kinds of things. And I was actually thinking I should just make a T-shirt for each of those things so that when I really want to just go in there, I just wear the T-shirt and I just do it. Well, not, not do it as in like act out the behaviours, but, you know, when I'm perhaps talking about those causes, that, just to be very clear there. But, and then I take it off again because honestly, it's something that was put on me in a way. I, 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 I absolutely agree with that. And that's not to diminish if somebody's got like an illness or a depression or something like that. It's not to say don't go to the doctor or don't treat it seriously. That's not the conversation. I think it's there's a difference between saying I'm experiencing this or I'm in this at this point in time I have this versus I am this and I need to defend this left, right and centre because this is now part of my identity. Such a fine line and I've been dancing with it since my autism diagnosis last year. I've just, yeah, anyway, long story, that's probably a whole nother call, but I had a lot of people say to me, you don't need that diagnosis. And all of them, I was just like, I love you and I need this. Yeah. and Actually, this has been one of the greatest things in my life because I am able to now put aside those behaviours that I've been trying to change and just go fully forwards into my work. And I have just been so happy with my psychologist. I didn't have a negative experience with her. I was very careful in who I went to. So it's, yeah, it's interesting. It's just such an interesting political minefield. Yeah. And give yourself permit, I think, too, the other thing is if you do get a diagnosis such as that, give yourself permission to not live up to that diagnosis so if you're if you're feeling happy great run with that um you know or if you don't tick every box great don't tick every box like you know it's about being aware but also giving yourself permission to be okay and you know as much as it's I love the language around it's okay not to be okay because I yeah, think yeah. that's an important message but it's also okay to be okay oh look 100 percent, and that's yeah 100 percent. that's what I've been I'm um, talking about actually just before the call is that a confident woman is a force of nature Absolutely. and 100 percent. like all the time the feedback I get is I inspire people like every person I work with raises their prices which is sometimes annoying for me to go back to them <laughs> because it's like my counselors my therapist my master like everyone I'm always like you know you could just add five bucks or like double that or you're actually really good <laughs> every time I go back they've gone up and I'm like, but <laughs> you're like stop talking about that <laughs> it's okay I just I say to myself okay Sarah you know pull pull out a bit more but you know I have an effect on people I raise their self-esteem and respect and I ra- I've raised the prices in the psychic industry how many times I've raised my own prices a hundred times yeah. And I know that you do something similar. And so I'm going to actually shut up for a bit. Yeah, but all yeah. I'm suggesting is that there's there's this nuanced place where it's like, can you actually be happy? And and that can be, um, yeah, can that be okay sometimes? Yes. And I think, I think the best, you know, happiness is an interesting one. And happiness, I, oh, my gosh, in my 20s, I really happiness was the goal um not so much now because happiness to me is such a fleeting emotion I really look at joy so how do I bring joy to things that I do even if it's stuff like it's funny like I always use the example I don't really enjoy cleaning but when I do clean and get into cleaning mode I'm like how do I Martha Stewart the heck out of this like and what I'm really saying to myself is how do I bring joy to this situation because happiness comes as a result of allowing your inner joy to shine. And as much as that sounds a bit like beautiful bumper sticker for a personal development yeah. workshop, it's it really is true. And I think um, I think joy comes in when you can love and accept you and love and accept the good of you and the stuff that's not so great in you and not to be afraid of the shadow side. Like the part where my son is crying outside the door part. <laughs> I love him. And just to let you know, there is an adult looking after him. I'm not like a terrible mother. Um, you know, as you were talking, I was getting this image just as the sun shines on a roof tile and then at night, it like the warmth, you know, reflects back. Absolutely. It's a little bit like, yeah, the joy you put into everything that you create, even if it's like just a clean house, it does radiate back. And I've learned actually, if I'm washing, I call it, if I'm washing with resentment, 
I stop myself and I'm like, you know what? I'm like really pursuing a dark path here. So, you know, these days, yeah, we put the music on, we get the kids over and all oh, kinds of things. Yeah. And that's, and that's meditation. So meditation isn't just the act of sitting on a beautiful mountaintop and, you know, breathing quietly. I think. Well, you could be picking up litter on the mountaintop yeah. and at the same time and well, then sit quietly. Even, yeah. Well, you know what? You might not even be on a mountaintop. I remember... Um, Actually, Tony Robbins said this. He's like, you know, anyone can meditate on top of a mountain. It's beautiful, it's calm, and it's peaceful, yeah. and you're on your own. Meditate when you've got kids pulling at you, and you're, or you're in the middle of a busy New York street on the way to do a deal. Like, meditation isn't just about sitting. And meditation is a form of living and practice. And, gosh, I'm, I'm nowhere close to being an expert at this, but it's something that I aim to. Is like, how do I bring my presence and meditation to what I'm doing? Yeah. And and that's where I think that's where acceptance and self-love comes in. Like I'm I'm really conscious when people are like, oh, my goal is to love myself. And I'm like, well, okay, that's that's an interesting goal because you don't wake up and go, I'm gonna force myself to love my kids. It's it's like you bring love and you experience love and by default you love yourself and you love your kids. And and some days it is a verb, it's a doing, like when we're tired or yeah. they're you're doing an interview and the kids are like bang 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 you're like I'm gonna love them um but it it is a verb but also it's a part of being and allowing yourself to be and know that you are love and allowing that to be expressed I just you know I feel your energy from here and I I believe you know that your work it really has paid off because I can I can just feel it like from here just the calmness within you which is just it's just so beautiful did have just a few more questions if that's all right so so you did sort of start the meditation journey around that turning point which is not surprising and so we started to talk about um that and i was just wondering you know did you have a few teachers i mean it sounds like so you met your mentor yeah some sort of other ways that you really got into meditation yeah so oh good question um it's okay yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so I look, I'm, I've never been a fan of having gurus because I think everyone is a person and we're like, as soon as you put someone up on a pedestal and make them a god or a guru, you then forget their humanity. And then as soon as they don't follow the script of what a god or a, hu a guru needs to do, then their teachings get lost. So yeah, that's interesting. You know, yeah, you that's can't you can't do that. So Chris Howard, um, I did a lot of work with Chris Howard. I did a lot of work with Coaching Institute. Did, obviously, did a lot of work with Tony Robbins. Yeah, um, I've done countless meditation courses. I've worked with meditation teachers and coaches and and it's all helped. Yeah, it, absolutely. But the thing the thing that I always do and um, is I don't look at them as being the thing that's going to heal or fix yeah. or whatever it is me. It's like, yeah. oh, what's this teaching? And if there's stuff that didn't resonate, yeah. throw it away. If there's stuff that resonated, okay, I'm going to take it in. And then really the best, the best teacher for me was actually being in nature and just doing because mm -hmm. you can learn all the theory and get it all here, but yeah. until you actually like practice meditation and go through your brain being crazy and it being yeah. uncomfortable and sitting through that or you know at the moment I'm doing a lot of um Byron Katie the work yeah that's that's a meditation I think and going to yoga and stuff like that as soon as you start to realize that you are your best meditation teacher yeah. I think that's where meditation takes takes the best um improvement in life because I love that that's amazing um I encourage people to get their phones out and actually um record their own meditations yes. I've been doing that for yes. a long time and um when you hear something in your own voice obviously it can bring up stuff but over time I recorded a few meditations and I sell them but also I listen to them every day so the the relationships one I've listened to at least 800 times yeah. and every single time I actually get something deeper from it because it's it's that whole idea, especially as a coach or a psychic or whatever, you are asking people to pay to listen to you. Yeah. And so if you don't literally like pay that energy to listen to yourself, there is this kind of break in the integrity. 100%. 100%. And I do the same thing. I've got a lot of meditations in my voice. And the yeah. other thing I really love is as you evolve and grow, it's really nice to listen back and you're like, oh, I love that version of myself. Yeah. And then at the same time, you're like, wow, you're still grasping here. And it's a really nice way to see healing. 
So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, definitely pre and post parenting. My voice dramatically changed after giving birth three times. Mainly it's much lower because of all the vocalizing that I did. Um, but it was like immediate, like straight after birth, I had this whole new voice. It was like so cool. <laughs> Um, so thank you, children. Okay, so a couple more questions. Um, do you have any advice for people who, you know, they really feel they should meditate, but they just can't meditate? They just struggle to meditate like other people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, start small. You know, like everyone says, oh, you know, if you can't do 20 minutes, you need 60 minutes. And I awesome. struggle with 20. <laughs> right? But start small. I know when I first started my meditation practice, um, a t really great tip I got was set a timer for one minute. Yeah, yeah. Start at a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing too is identify why you're struggling with meditation. Usually the reason why we struggle with meditation is we have a perception of what meditation should look yeah. like, it should yeah. be. You're not meant to clear your mind of thoughts. Mm -hmm. Thoughts are going to be there. It's just about being aware and present and letting them pass through. And so, yeah. you know, when we try to monkey grip, knuckle grip our thoughts out of our brain that's when it becomes uncomfortable but if you can accept and say this is part of my meditation practice my brain's going like crazy right now then and I'm just going to observe the craziness and also the judgments that I'm having that my brain should be clearer and you know and when you've been meditating for a long time when you go back to almost basic beginnings again you're yeah. like I should be better really there's yeah. the ego just forget that like accept that that's part of it so start small um and you know what, don't start, Don't even start every day. Maybe it's every second day, one minute. Yeah. And it could just be like, I'm going to take and is going to do breathing. And the other thing I also recommend with people studying meditation is find your form of meditation. Yeah, totally. In many different ways. Trust your intuition, trust your gut and trust what feels good. If yeah. it's guided, it's that. If it's running, running meditation, I used to do a yeah. lot of running meditations. Oh, that's great. Right. I'll have to get some of those links off you. That's yeah, that's yeah. actually a really interesting really one. Now, I know that you have to go, so I've just like two more yeah. questions. One is, yeah, yeah. Um, so how can coaches really benefit from meditation? And the other one is how can people connect with you or follow your work? Yeah, so um, I think you've already answered that. If you don't listen to you, why should anyone else listen to you? Um, it's certainly so, a question I would ask, you know, if exactly. I had someone who was sort of not walking the talk. Exactly. And, you know, you hear coaches regurgitating you know all these people that have written books well that's fine there's nothing wrong with that but I also think back the people who wrote the books they were being themselves they came up with their own philosophy mm -hmm. so if we want to change the world I honestly believe everyone's got a special gift to bring to the world you got to listen and find out what that gift is and then bring it forward yeah and then um because my practice is really private now and locked down mm -hmm. one I've just recently as in a couple of weeks ago started an Instagram account called the daily achieve which is probably and why I'm interviewing you because <laughs> I have a pretty good thing well so the irony is that so I'm always late to human appointments yeah. um a varying amounts of horrendous amount of time Sarah's standard time but I'm just always like spiritually on time it's 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 really amazing and annoying at the same time but I just like for this little feeling of like I need to talk to like it's time it's and time fun. for us to like connect. Yeah. So the daily achieve and that's where it's looking at, you know, what are the what are the practices you can put in place to achieve the goals that you want and be the person you want, yeah. but not from a place of hustle and harsh, but more yeah. from this place of self-love and compassion and flow and ease and grace. Yeah, so totally. the daily achieve. So I'll put that link um, below, I'll get that off you. And so I just want to say thank you. I've only, you know, we've worked together a few times. You've been my coach and um yeah. gosh, it just everything you said, it literally stayed in my head, like on a little shelf. Aww. And I remember one of the greatest things you said to me is I said, um, there was this, this, it's like I was stuck in a light bulb or something. And you said, just break the light bulb. <laughs> and I was sitting in the car and I just remember actually like hearing glass shatter. I mean, not physically, but yeah, it was just such a strong image. And I didn't realize you could do that much energy work just on the phone with words. Absolutely. I've been doing that for years now with clients. But I, when I trace it back, I think to that moment when I went, it can be done very simply without all the mechanicals and tools and yes. incantations. You can actually just command things to happen like in that movie Dune when you use the Absolutely. voice. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it can happen like that. Sometimes it takes time, but yeah. sometimes it can happen like that. Yeah. And just to embrace, embrace that, like let the glass fall and you're yeah. done. Oh, just absolute pleasure to see you again. I really look forward to our next connection. So this Thank has you. been um, Suzanne 
altered. Yes, that's about right. About to get married. Super exciting. <laughs> Previously, Suzanne King. And this has been Sarah from Sarayip.com. Facebook, The Numbers Queen, and Instagram, Sarayip1111, with another one of your meditation tip series. So thanks, everyone, for your support. And thank you so much, Suzanne. See you next time. My pleasure. Bye.